In the final video in the VF1000R restoration reboot series, we'll be repairing and painting the fiberglass lower fairing, applying the final flow coat to the tail unit and upper fairing, cut and buffing all of the fairings, assembling remaining components, installing the fairings with new hardware, and doing a final reveal. As you can see here, I'd already carried out some fiberglass repairs to the lower fairing. So now it's time to dress those repairs back, do any final touch-ups and prepare the lower for paint. Okay, so I've finished um, getting all the shape back into the, the, the lower cowl, as you can see. So I've got all that fiberglass repair cut back. Um, there's some, uh, as you'd expect with fiberglassing, there's some uh, defects just in the surface where we didn't get a full fill of um, resin. Um, I don't want to take that back any further than it is now because I've got good thickness and if I go too deep um, into the resin I'm going to end up just exposing the cloth and weakening the repair and right now this is a really strong good repair. So what I'll do is actually just fill these little areas, these pockets uh, with fiberglass uh, filler. Okay so uh, before I actually go ahead with the fiberglass filler um, I just thought about uh, a couple of these areas where there was some cracking in the gel coat or crazing in the gel coat and I kind of thought I was going to go the cyanoacrylate route with that but I took a, another look at it and there was just too much separation between uh, the cloth and the uh, resin so I wasn't comfortable with that approach it's okay if it's just very fine you know kind of spider webbing of the gel coat but it was uh, pretty significant damage once I took another look so what I've done is I've actually took a Dremel very crudely cut out all the uh, gel coat that had, that had cracked uh, away um, and I've you know left it very rough so that I get a good bond with the fiberglass filler so I've done that for the mounting hole there uh, I've also done that for um, here where there was a crack um, a crack just in the edge of this fairing here again I've just took a Dremel and cut it all out until the cracks gone uh, and I'm just gonna now lay that in with with fiberglass filler there's a couple of other little areas as well that I'll do the same thing with one just here on the side but that's it just three points now so yep yeah, I'll uh, crack on with that and then once that's set um, I'll get that sanded back I'll also be just going in along here where we did the major repair um, and we've got these little voids here in the gel coat I'm just going to fill those with fiberglass filler as well there's no point in trying to sand those all the way back it'll just um, cut it too close to the cloth that's underneath yeah so I'm going to get that fiberglass filler laid in I've already gone over this and cleaned it with Prepsol to uh, make sure I get a good bond so I'll lay that in once that's dried I'll get that sanded back and I guess you know that's probably where I'll bring you back to see it once it's all sanded back and basically then we'll be ready for step two which uh is going to be the epoxy primer to seal all that in okay let's crack on okay so i've uh <coughs> gone over the entire panel uh with the fiberglass uh, filler so i've done all the major repairs there 
there were some other um, where I'd done some older repairs as well around these uh, vent inlets. I just went in and uh, did an ex extra little bit of uh, reinforcement with this uh, with this filler. Here you can see it's rough right now, but I've um, filled in where I removed all that cracked gel coat. Um, and I actually took the opportunity uh, also just to go on the inside of the fairing. Um, so I did that bit where there was a crack and I, and I dremeled it all out. But I kind of just went in as well and tidied up where I'd done some reinforcements and there were some old reinforcements uh, in the fiberglass. I've just gone and filled uh, some of those in where there were some... Uh, some defects in that but uh, yeah um i have to say I, and i was i'm using for this i've used the u-pole um fantastic glass this is a lightweight so really fine stranded uh, fiberglass filler and i have to say it's fantastic it's perfect for jobs like this where you're just uh, filling in you know defects in the existing gel coat or fiberglass repair that you've already done um because it's very fine chopped fiberglass mat in there and it's easy to get in all the um, all the voids so we'll let that cure um, and then we'll come back sand all that off um, I'll go over there's still some small defects here and there uh, so uh, but they're, they're too small to use a fiberglass resin um, filler I'll just go in with a, a standard um, bondo and fill those so that'll be the next step uh, we'll go over and do that and then uh, sand it all back one more time and it'll be ready for the uh, the epoxy primer so here I'm trial fitting the inspection panel for the oil level window and I'm not very happy with the fit the panel is very thin and sits recessed inside the fiberglass fairing and the plastic has gone slightly brittle over time so i used the ca technique to reinforce the back of the inspection panel and increase its thickness here i'm inspecting the cooling vent doors and i noticed one of them is slightly warped so i use the hot air gun to soften the plastic and pull it back into shape So with all the repairs completed, I can now give the parts a coating of 2K high build primer. And with the high build primer cured, I can now sand it back to remove any scratches and defects. Here, I'm using a surface putty to fill any final pinholes before I apply the surface primer. It's time to apply the surface primer to seal in the repairs and provide a perfect substrate for the first base coat. And with the surface primer cured, I can now apply the Shasta White base coat, followed by three coats of clear to seal it in. Okay, so with the clear, first coat of clear now cured on the VF1000R lower, what I'm going to do now is prepare this, the next. Uh, color will be red uh, that, I've, uh, that I'll be painting on which is basically 
in this area here and that has to line up with the upper so um, yeah what I'm gonna do to get that alignment and the transition point exact with the upper fairing I'm going to um, flat back this clear just remove the majority of the orange peel out of it uh, so I'll flat it back with 1000 grit um, which will then give a good key for the next base coat the fighting red but I'll flat it back then I will get it mounted to the bike with the upper everything screwed in place exactly where it should be with the right hardware then I'll tape out all the lines that are transitioning from the upper to the lower uh, and then I'll remove the lower with all the tape uh, the the tape out in place and then we'll be able to add some fighting red so yeah I'll put you on uh, time lapse while I get that done Okay, so I've mounted the uh, lower and I've fitted all the hardware in there. Um, so what we're going to do now using the reference photographs that I took from the original paint scheme, uh, which gives me all the positioning and dimensions for the red uh, fighting red areas and also the candy blue areas. I'm now going to start taping out um, those areas. I'm actually going to tape out both the uh, red and blue areas and then that way when I come to paint them I just mask one off while I'm doing the other and vice versa and I don't have to come back and take new measurements um, let's say for the blue area if I only did the red. Yep, so pretty straightforward. I'm going to start laying all the tape out now. Uh, I'll just put that on uh, time lapse and bring you back when the tape out's completed. <laughs> Okay, so I've got the first side taped out. So this is the fighting red area inside this tape line here. And then inside this tape line here will be the candy blue. And uh, yeah, that took a lot longer than expected. And even with, you know, a good 10, 12, photos of uh, the original paint layout um, it still took a lot of trial and error to get all the measurements to line up but I'm very happy with that 
looks pretty pretty close to the original um, so now the challenge is going to be uh, replicating that exactly the same on the other side of the fairing so that's next I won't uh, bore you with that but uh, once I'm done taping out the other side we'll remove the uh, lower and we'll prep the uh, I'm going to do the fighting red first so we'll prep those areas and uh, I'll get the fighting red uh, laid over and uh, I'll show you that when that's done then once that's cured we will mask that off uh, so first thing we do is we'll mask everything off other than this area here spray that with fighting red then when that's cured we'll mask off everything but the candy blue area here and we'll paint that with candy blue yeah and then um i think the way i'm going to do this because this is a urethane base i will spray the red i don't think i will clear over the red before i do the candy blue because i'm i'm a little bit nervous about getting too many layers of clear uh, before we get to the final flow coats and because it's urethane if i do mark the base coat while i'm laying down the um candy blue you can just come in generally unless it's a metallic or a candy you can come in and uh just uh, s uh sand out lightly sand out or scuff out the area that um that was marked okay uh so yeah goal would be get the fighting red down get the candy blue down then i'll clear it again uh in preparation for the decal uh, we'll lay the decal down we'll clear it again and then uh, once that's cured we'll um sand that back and do a final flow coat here we have the left hand side of the cowl taped out and finally here's the cowl and the vent doors with the first coats of fighting red i now mask off the areas to be painted candy blue and start by laying down the metallic blue base coat followed by the candy blue top coat and once cured, I can remove all of the masking and apply another three layers of clear coat to the cow, the vent doors and inspection panel. Okay, so the um, clear coat that we laid down over the top of the base coats, the fighting red and then the candy blue is all cured. Um, so what we're gonna do now is sand this back with um, my foam sanding blocks and a 600 grit paper, wet and dry. So we'll be using some simple green. Um, and I'm gonna now uh, sand, wet sand the clear coat back. Um, mainly uh, just in preparation for the decals. So there's a decal that'll go here on the candy blue. I do like to remove the orange peel before I lay down um, the decal, just just so you get a smoother lay down of the decal, uh, and um, in the end result, you don't see you know uh, potentially any of the um, orange peel that was sat underneath the decal. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna, do, but I'll do the whole because I'm gonna. I lay down the decal then I'll be clear coating this again completely to seal in the decals um, because I'm going to clear coat the whole thing I will actually sand back um, the clear on the whole uh, lower and uh, I'll do it where I'm just just about removing the um, orange peel it's not critical because when I do the next layer clear, I'm probably then a flow coat on top of that. That will be polished smooth. Um, and it this uh, orange peel here, orange peel here will no longer show through. But anyway, I've got to, I've got to at least sand back this. If I'm going to clear coat the whole thing again, I've got to at least sand back 
all of the surface to provide a key uh, for the next layer of clear coat. Okay, so using the, I've got the decal here that we're going to apply to the lower and then using photographs that I, and measurements I took from the original fairing, I've taped that out now with masking tape onto the freshly painted fairing and now I just simply need to lay the decal down um, to those positions so yeah I'll uh, I've got uh, some decal application gel you can also use just some um, simple green a little bit of simple green with water as well but I like the gel just gives you a bit more working time and uh, I've got the decal so yeah let's let's uh, let's get going decals installed I can apply another two layers of clear coat to seal them in. With the clear coat cured, I can cut it back with 2000 grit wet and dry to remove the orange peel and then buff and polish for a show bike finish. see the mirror-like finish that's achieved after several hours of sanding and polishing. And before fitment to the bike, I install the vent door hardware and inspection panel. With the lower cowl finished, I now prep 
the tail unit and seat cowl for flow coat by first sanding them back with 1000 grit wet and dry and then applying three layers of clear coat. That cured, I then go through the usual routine of sanding back the parts with 2000 grit wet and dry before buffing with a heavy cut compound, medium compound and polishing compound. Having just received the newly recovered seat and foot pad, I temporarily install them to make sure everything fits correctly. And I now repeat the entire process all over again for the top cow. And with the top cowl cut and buff complete, I paint the inside black as per the factory. I also repeat this on the lower cowl. With all the fairings cut and buffed, we can now start the final assembly of the bike, starting with the front mudguard. The seat, towel unit and solo seat. the top cowl complete with new old stock screen and fasteners. Radiator top grille and wing mirror rubber grommets. Top cowl assembly complete we can now install it on the bike with brand new hardware. Installed, we can now clean, polish, and install the OE mirrors. Before installing the lower cowl, we need to install the toolbox and the original toolkit. I now install the Zeus fasteners on the lower cowl and fit the cowl to the bike. And to wrap up the restoration, I need to air up the front forks to 9 PSI, the rear shock to 43 PSI, and the icing on the cake fit the new old stock side panels that I've been storing for over eight years. And without further introduction, I'm extremely proud to reveal to you the completed restoration on my 1985 VF 1000 R. Please enjoy.
like to thank everybody for watching these video series and helping me grow the channel. We have plenty of exciting new restoration projects coming up, but please like this video and subscribe to the channel.